Let's give it up. They did such a great job today. Let's just say thank you. So many of us don't even realize the, the amount of time that they put in to be prepared and ready uh, each and every Sunday. And we, we really don't say thank you as often as we should. And so they're here on Wednesdays. They're practicing. And as they introduce new songs, they have to learn all of those things. And so it's just good for us to pause and say thanks for using your, their gifts that God's given them. So uh, I'm excited that you're here today. And as we walk through this particular series, this is a, a really a, a fun series for me because it's, it's very practical in nature. Um, I, I, like, um, I like the simplicity of scriptures at times to just be able to say, you know what, if you'll just do this, um, it's so simple. And yet I find, and maybe you're this way, but I find that it's so difficult, isn't it, to sometimes apply the simplest truth of scripture. But the simplest truth, if you can embrace it, if you can walk in it, that's this series is called Walk This Way. So we're in this series in, in Ephesians, and we're in the second part of Ephesians for this series, which is really uh, Paul encouraging followers of Jesus that this is how you would walk this out in your life. So positionally, that's what Ephesians 1 through 3, chapters 1 through 3 are talking about. They're saying, this is who you are in Christ, your position in Christ. And then he's walking this and going, okay, now beginning in chapter 4, it's like, here's how you can put this into practice in a very practical sense in your life. The difficult thing, I believe, for a lot of us is we, we struggle with this thing, and it's a word, it's called change. I don't know if you've realized that, but so many people struggle and wrestle with change because I'm, let's just be honest, we, we like things to be the same. And so uh, as we embarked upon this year, we, we launched a, a third service because what, what we realize is that in, in previous months, um, people uh, were having problems with parking spaces and seats and all this type of stuff. And so we opened up this service. And some people don't like it because they have to change their service time that they attend. And we, we're very intentional, so we make everybody change, right? So we didn't, we didn't keep the service times that we had. We launched three new service times so that everybody could embrace some of the change that was coming their way. Now, one of the other things that happens in a lot of our lives is, is we come into a, a place and it's like, well, that, that seat is where I normally sit. And I, I don't like change. I, I want to be able to sit where I normally sit, and that's hard for me. Um, and then there's people that go to restaurants. And have you ever been to a restaurant that you, you, you go to on a pretty regular basis, and then they change the menu? That's so frustrating. You finally found this place that you can eat a, a salad or, or one of the big things for, for Carrie and I, especially my wife, is that when they change and they, they used to serve Coke, but now they serve Pepsi. And so that's, I mean, that's just like disgusting. I, ne I never said, it, but it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because they changed and they, here's the worst part. They didn't even consult you on the change, did they? <laughs> they just went ahead and did it. They didn't ask you. They just did it. And change 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 is so hard for so many of us but here's the thing as we walk with Jesus as we follow Jesus as we embrace the relationship that he's called us to we we talk about it in this way kind of the mission of our church when you we really boil it down the mission of our church is that we exist to lead people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ and so as a follower of Jesus what we what we begin to realize is my life should be about change. My life should be changing. The things that, the way that I walk with Jesus, the, my attitude towards people, the, the way that I talk, the way that I live, everything about my life should be changing. Not that I'm ever going to arrive, because let's all admit it that we're never going to arrive. But I should be pursuing this life that is ever-changing I'm because I'm growing I'm maturing I'm becoming more um, secure in my walk with Jesus and so I'm able to just step into this going you know what my life's going to look a little bit different today my life should look different this year than it did last year um, my life today should look a little bit different than it did yesterday why because I'm changing because we believe this is it we exist to lead people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus your life this year, 2019, second Sunday, good job, you made it, and your life this year should be different. You should be changing to become more like Jesus is really what it boils down to. 
that's how your life should be. So that's, that's our mission. And then we, we also look at it from a, from a perspective in our life of, okay, so there's things that we value. And as a church, we have these things that we call core values. And what we mean by core values are these are the things that we really care about. We really care about. And one of the ways that we say it is, because we believe this, we strive for this. Because we're not perfect and we're not going to really achieve it, but because we believe this, we strive that. And so for us, it's because we believe growing people change. That's you and me. Because we believe growing people change, we're going to change in our life that we're going to strive to teach the Word. And by this, we mean the Word of God. We're going to strive to teach the Scriptures. We're going to strive to teach you what God's Word says. And this context on a Sunday morning, we're also going to do it in our small groups and other environments where people are hearing God's Word. And because they're hearing God's Word, they're learning to apply God's Word to their life. And they're not just hearers of the Word, but they're becoming doers of the Word, which means their life is changing. It means that they are changing. They are changing sometimes at a rapid pace. We're seeing that with some people. Some folks, it's a little bit slower, but we're still seeing change happen in people's lives as we teach and encounter God's Word. And so this morning we're going to do that. And as we encounter Ephesians chapter 4, that's where we are. So if you have a copy of God's Word, turn to Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to pick up in verse 17. But I want you to ask yourself this question. As you, as you go throughout this text, and this is actually a pretty good question, a pretty good filter for you to ask yourself in, as you're reading God's Word, as you're reading God's truth, as you're encountering it in different ways, what, what, what should I be doing? But here's the big question is, who's the me that God wants me to be? Who's the me that God wants me to be? And I want, listen, I want this to be specific to you. So I didn't ask, like, who's the you? I want you to ask the question, who's the me? As I read this particular verse, who's the me in this that God wants me to be? And it can be, you can take that with every verse, every passage that you're reading. Um, if you're someone, I don't know if you're, if you're in the Bible app, but if you're on the Bible app and you read the verse of the day and you read the verse of the day and that verse pops up and it says, you know, uh, the, the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run to it and they are safe. I mean, I don't know what that verse of the day might be, but, but what is that? What is that for you? What, what, who's the me in this? Who does God want me to be in light of this particular truth in the scriptures? Who's the me that God wants me to be? And, and here's the deal in, in this particular text in Ephesians 4. It's so clear. You don't, you don't even have to guess at it. You don't even have to try to go, huh, well, let me spend some time thinking about that. You don't even have to do that because he's so clear in this particular text that you can just look at it and go, that's what I, that's what I should be. It's very similar to even how we approached last week. So last week in Ephesians 4, verse 2, who's the me that God wants me to be? And this is what he said. Um, be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Well, and no, I shouldn't say easy because that's really, really difficult to actually live out. But, but it's in terms of who's the me that God wants me to be, it's easy to see in that. Well, God wants me to be um, humble, He wants me to be gentle, and He wants me to be patient. Any of you try that this week, by the way? Anybody just want to say, you know what, I tried that this week, and I would just want to tell you that amazing things happened. And if you didn't, Maybe that, maybe we should just go back to that this morning and not even go into the next part of this. But it, it is, it's like, here it is. This is, this is what he says that you should do. This is who he says you should be. All you have to do is embrace it. All you have to do is decide to go, you know what? I'm going to lean into this. And, and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to fall. I'm going to struggle. I'm not going to live up to it 100% of the time. But, but if I can just get myself into a position to pursue this, man. It will change so much about my life. It will change so much about my relationships if I can lean into what we find in the scriptures. And so who's the me that God wants me to be? So let's look at what he says today in Ephesians 4, picking up in verse 17. He says this, Paul's you know, encouraging them. He's coming on the heels of, of talking about how we're to live in community with each other, using our gifts to serve one another. That's what he has said prior to verse 17, which by the way, as a church, we're stronger and healthier and all of those things when we all step into serving one another. That's why we have the say yes wall out in the lobby. We have opportunities for you to serve and connect. And uh, we're better as a church when you do that. We're better as a church when you use your gifts, talents, and strengths 
to serve in the church. And so I want to encourage you that if you're not serving, we need you. If you're not serving, we want you. If you're not serving, we, we want to find a place for you to uh, use your gifts and talents and strengths for the kingdom. So now he's coming on the heels of that, and he's going he's gonna to say this. He says, um, with the Lord's authority, I say this, live um, no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Now, let me just tell you what I, what I, I believe he's, he's talking about here, is he's talking about, he used the term Gentiles, but that's most of us in the room. But what he really means is those who are outside of the faith. So he's saying, look, look you're, as someone who is a follower of Jesus, as someone who identifies himself as a Christian, you're not to live any longer as someone who is outside of the faith. And so you're not to live as the Gentiles do. And he says, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds, he says, are full of darkness. They wander far from the life. I, lo- I just love the way he phrases that. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. Now here's here's one of the first things I want to challenge you with in, in terms of who's the me that God wants me to be as you look at this paragraph in in this particular context because the the difficult thing for a lot of us is that we're going to look at those who are outside of the faith and and we're going to think and we're going to believe and we're going to look at them um, probably in a way that we shouldn't because we're going to look at them and we're going to think they get what they deserve And, and in fact in a lot of ways we're going to we're going to think of ourselves as superior to them and, and we're going to look down at them. And I, we, we all fall into this trap when we see people who are outside. They're not followers of Jesus. They're not following Jesus. And we think, we think that, follow, that people who don't follow Jesus should act like people who follow Jesus. But can I let you in on a little secret? They're not going to. Lost people are going to act like lost people. Okay, And Paul has more to say to the church about uh, if you're a follower of Jesus, then you need to live like a follower of Jesus. Okay, now here's what I want to show you in the in this particular text is he's going to listen those who are outside of the faith. Listen to how he described that those who are outside of the faith. The, the first day he says they're they're confused. Do you know what it's like to be confused? It's miserable, absolutely miserable. My kids are doing that math stuff that they do now and I have to help them with it some nights. And listen, I was a good math student. I can do math in my head the old way. And so I'm trying to figure this stuff out. It's confusing, amen? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it, it, being confused is frustrating. Being confused is, is disappointing. You, ever, you, you know, you, you lost your way, and, and here's the other way that he describes it. They've wandered from the life. Think about that. They've wandered. They've gotten off path. They've gotten off target, however you want to think about it, but they've wandered away from the life, the life that God would have for them. Do you, do you know people like that? You see, the scriptures tell us that the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give us life. And see, for those who are outside of the faith, they're wandering away from life. You know what I'm saying? They're wandering away from the life that God has. Now, I want to just point you to one particular verse this morning. You don't have to turn there, but you can jot this reference down. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, and it's verse 4. And, and this is one of those things that's just been on my heart this week as I, as I kept reading through those first few verses. And it, and it just goes like this. This is, this is, again, this is such a simple truth for us to begin to embrace. And it says this, Satan, um, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those, of those who don't believe. Okay, so, so I want you to think about that for a minute, and, and just now he's going to talk about some of the ramifications of it. So think about how he's saying it, like Satan, the devil, the enemy, however you want to describe him, he is the God of this world, and he has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. So if you translate that to Ephesians 4, he's saying, for those who are outside of the faith, their minds have been blinded, right, by by the enemy okay and so now now this it gets it gets even worse so this is as a result of their blindness so i want you to think about as a result of their blindness they are unable to see the glorious light of the good news think about that 
Those who are outside of the faith, their minds have been blinded by the devil, and they are unable, listen, unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They, they, they can't see the glory of the gospel. And then he goes on, he says, um, they don't understand the, this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. So, so this, is what, this is what happens. For those who are outside of the faith, the devil works really hard to keep them outside of the faith. And so their minds are blinded. And so we, you know, we, we gather in a setting like this, in a context like this on a Sunday morning, and we're, um, we're singing, right? We're exalting Jesus. We're, we're celebrating uh, his redemptive work on the cross. We're celebrating the fact that, you know, through him we're forgiven of all of our sins, past, present. We're celebrating all of those things. But, but here's, here's what you've got to understand. Uh, for those who are outside of the faith, their, their, their minds are blinded in such a way that they can't see the glory of Christ. Now, could you imagine not being able to see the glory of Christ? Could you imagine not being able to see the, and be amazed at the gospel of Jesus Christ? That's them. And so here, here's why I point this out to you. I believe, as I search the scriptures, that understanding that type of truth and seeing people in that light should move us towards compassion towards them instead of judgment. You see, I, I think as, as a follower of Jesus, our, our natural inclination is we want to judge them. Right? Well, I'm going to judge you because, you know, you don't live life the way that I live life. But, but here's the thing. Like, their eyes, their minds are blinded. They can't see the glory of the gospel. But you have the glory of the gospel. You've embraced the glory of the gospel. You believe the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They haven't. And so what happens is now you have the chance to step into their life. And now, while their, their eyes have been blinded, you have an opportunity to step into their life and, and you can do that, actually, when you, when you read this, you'll see exactly how you could begin to do that. And, and then what will begin to happen is you have the chance to be a part of God peeling away the layers of their blindness. And so be, because, here, here, because through your life, because through your compassion, because through your kindness, we're going to get to there at the very end, through those means and those opportunities that you have to interact with people who are outside of the faith, God can begin to work through your willingness and they can begin to experience some of the good news of Jesus Christ because you, you, you and I, we've decided we're not going to judge, but we're going to love. We've decided that we're going to walk differently in community with them than we are, than we've been used to. And so we get to be a part of God peeling away the layers of their life. Because why? Because our hearts have compassion, not judgment, compassion towards them. Because we understand the truth of their minds being blinded by the enemy. And we want to be a part, we want to be a tool being used by God to step into those moments and say, God, I want to help this person experience the gospel, your love, and your compassion, and your grace. Because I, I, I've been shown that same thing in my life. And so, okay, so that's, that's part of what he's saying in this particular piece is that they're outside of the faith. But, then he, but this is where he begins to direct his attention to the church. And this is where we, we need to shift our thinking from being judgmental towards those who are outside of the faith to basically looking at our own life going, okay, I have some work to do on me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin to work on me in my life. And what does that look like? And so he goes on, he says this in verse 20, he says, but that isn't what you learned about Christ. So you Christian, you follower of Jesus, you who are now a part of the faith, you're no longer outside of the faith, but you're a part of the faith, but you didn't learn Christ that way. Um, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, and now he begins to talk about the life and the behavior uh, of a follower of Jesus when he says this, now you should throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Um, instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes, put on the new nature created to be like God 
truly righteous and holy. And this is, this is what, it, what it means and what it looks like in our life, is, is we would begin, okay, because this is a process. You're not going to achieve this overnight, but we're going to begin to look at our life and begin to peel away the layers of our life, this old sinful nature that used to be a part of who we are, but it's not who we are anymore. And so we're going to begin to take away this part, this stuff from our life. And we're going to be able, this old sinful nature, you know what I'm saying? Like the old self, the old way you used to respond, the, the old way that you used to live. And he gives an example of that in just a few minutes. But we're going to, we're going to get to this place where we're going to take this stuff off. And then he talks about now we're going to replace it with something else. And that's the, I think, the challenge that so many of us have is if I walk away from this, what am I going to put in its place? Did you know that? It's like, uh, I love the way Paul describes that in the scriptures as he, as he says, hey, you should, uh, you should uh, in Colossians 3, he talks about taking, the, in the, the actual image is this article of clothing that you're removing these things and um, from your life and so he's talking about anger rage and malice and deceit and all those things like take those things off and then now he says now clothe yourself with compassion and kindness humility and love and that type of stuff and so when you when you do away with this you've got to replace it with this when you're trying to you know it's like habits when you're trying to do away with an old habit you need to replace it with a new habit because here's what happens if you don't if you give yourself just a little bit that's that's that part of your old self is being um really as he says it in there he says which is corrupted by less lust and deception so your old self those old ways when you just give yourself just a little bit of that it's like, you know, I'm going to have a little pity party or I'm going, to give my, I'm, I'm going to be angry just a little bit with this person. I'm going to allow that. It just takes you into this deep, dark place. Did you ever notice that? When you allow it to happen, it's like you give it an inch and it takes a mile. And Paul is going, no, 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 no. You've got to, you've got to begin to shed those layers and take those things off and then replace them. And this is the hard thing. We're going to replace them with asking the Spirit to renew our thoughts thoughts and attitudes oh that is i don't like that verse that's hard that's a hard verse when i think about it i i, I started wor just working through this and i'm like wait a minute wait a minute what does this look like and here's here's what this kind of looks like for me in my life this looks like um a note card on on the dashboard of my car that i read 10 times before i step into my house at night this looks like a, a note card I put in the dashboard of my car that I read 10 times before I show up to the office. And I'm a pastor, you know what I'm saying? Like, I should be better than this, but I'm not. And I just read this, and I'm like, this is part of what God wants to do in my life. He wants to allow the Spirit to renew my thoughts so, so I'm not thinking the way that I used to think, because that's not who I am anymore. I'm being renewed, right? And so he's renewing my thoughts. He's written, man, I have an awful attitude sometimes. Does anybody else just resonate? Does that resonate with anybody? Is that just me? Because I'm, it's just me. Thank you. Um, Mikey D. Um, that's just, I do, I mean, I have an awful attitude sometimes. I don't know how my wife's put up with me all these years. I really don't, but, but this is what, I just want to see the spirit just work and go, no, 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 no. You don't have to be that way anymore. And sometimes it's like, I, I give it an inch and it takes a mile. And it just takes me to this deep, dark place that I don't need to be in. And, and God's going, hey, come, listen. It's not that I haven't made it a big mystery. <laughs> Here it is. Stop doing that. Start doing this. Why? And he says this. Put on your new nature. And he says, created to be like God and, and truly holy and righteous. So, so the way that this verse is translated in another text is that you are being created in righteousness and holiness. That's now who you are. I think this is one of the neatest things about the Christian life because maybe you don't realize this, but you should. But outside of Jesus, you are not righteous and holy. You're not. I mean, outside of Jesus, you're going to respond in the flesh. Outside of Jesus, you're going to be mad and angry and judgmental and all that stuff. And, but then, but not in Christ, because in Christ, this new nature, this new self, this new person, this change that's happening in you is being created truly righteous and holy. You see, and so part of renewing your thoughts is realizing that's not who I am anymore, but this is who I am now. 
And so I'm letting go of who I used to be and I'm embracing who I am now. So while before I felt unworthy and I felt unloved and I felt all of those things because I just kept sinning and I was in a deep, dark place and all of those things that so many of us have walked in. He's like, no, 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 now my new self, this new me, this person that I am now, I am created in righteousness and holiness. And, and can I just say, I don't know if you, you like this idea. I, I personally, this is the way I'm embracing it. I, like, I'm proud of that. Not in, a, not, in a me, not in a me pride, but can you just see what Jesus can do with us? You know what I'm saying? Like us who are so messed up. Like we've gone so far and it's like, but no, 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 no. The new you, the new you, the new you, you that you are in Christ is created in righteousness and holiness. And, and I, I, I just really believe when I look at it and I, I see what the scripture says about who I am now and the Spirit's renewing my thoughts and my attitudes, it's like, huh, this, this is who he wants me to be. And I can, and I can step into that with, with confidence because God's working on my life. And it's really something truly miraculous. So if you want to believe in miracles, you're the miracle because you're not who you used to be. So, so now he goes on, he's going to get real practical. He says this. Uh, what does it look like? So you who are being renewed, you who have new attitudes, he goes, what does it look like? So stop telling lies. That's one. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't, let, and don't sin by letting anger control you. That's a tough one. Not, not so much? You guys are good with that? Think about it. Now, you and I both know people who, whose anger controls them. In fact, some of you in this room, that's, that's you. Like, your anger controls you. And, and what Paul is saying in this is don't let anger control you. Don't, don't let it control you. It's real simple. And then he says this. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. Ooh. You see... Some, some people, probably nobody in this room, but I'll bet first service people especially. Because, I mean, they got up early. We got to rest a little bit this morning. I'll, some of them probably, some of you, I'll throw some in there. We, we went to bed angry last night because something happened. We had some sort of conflict or some sort of deal with our spouse or maybe even our kids. And we went to bed and we were angry. And, and here's the danger in that, because this, to me, this is just one of those principles you can look at in Scripture and go, you know what, I really need to deal with this. Because, see, when you do that, when you allow anger to have that kind of a place in your life, it gives the devil a foothold. And, and listen, when that begins to happen, and you and I know people, and maybe this is your story as well, um, that leads to some stinking thinking. It leads, it, it, you start thinking stuff that you, you shouldn't be thinking. You know, some things like maybe even saying, well, maybe I'm better off without this person or maybe this person's better off without me and blah, 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 da, 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 da. No, no, no. The simple principle. Don't go to bed angry. Just don't go to bed angry. Don't, don't let the sun go down on your wrath because um, anger gives the devil a foothold. And so just, boom, this, as, as a follower of Jesus, he's going, don't do that. <laughs> Stop telling lies. Don't let the uh, sun go down on your wrath. And he says, um, if you are a thief, and again, this is just another example. If you're a thief, um, don't steal any longer. And, and the whole thing in this, in this particular part of this text, he's just wanting to give us some examples. This is what it looks like to walk with Jesus. This is how our life is different when we walk with Jesus. Who we used to be, controlled by anger, we're not controlled by anger anymore. Who we used to be in telling lies, we're not going to tell lies anymore, we're going to tell the truth. Who we used to be in, in this particular place, and he says, when you, I used to be a thief and I used to steal, I'm not going to steal any longer. Instead, I'm going to do good, hard, hard work. That's what he says. I'm going to do good, hard work, and I'm going to learn to give generously. Because why? Because I'm not who I used to be any longer. When I chose to follow Jesus, when my eyes were illuminated to the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ, when I stepped into believing and trusting and following Jesus, my life is no longer the same. In fact, 
the way that we should be looking at it is my life is an ongoing change experiment of sorts. Like you are being changed on a regular basis as you take God's truth and embrace it in your life. So if you're, if you're a thief, you're not going to steal any longer. If you used to be someone controlled by anger, you're not going to be controlled by anger. If you're, and then he goes on, this is, this is one that maybe, this might be more of some of you in this room right here. Do not use foul or, or abusive language right? Some of you are like, yeah, I knew he's going to get to me. So you, you were good before. You were not someone who told lies. You know, you weren't angry, not that type of person. And you just sure didn't steal, but your mouth. See, when I was, when I was growing up, when I was growing up, man, my mom would wash our mouth out with soap. Did it, did it ever happen to anybody else? Oh man, you know, you just, she'd take this. I don't know how it worked in your life, but in my life, I had to stick my tongue out, and she took a bar of soap, and it was usually like Irish Spring or something like that. It's just nasty. And she just, just right across the tongue. No. I mean, that only happened a couple of times, but it happened a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? And some of you, listen, after the service, our prayer team's going to have some, some soap. And <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? That'd be awesome. Like, if you're one who struggles with um, uh, foul or abusive language, and listen, we know who you are. You know, we know, like, your wife or your husband, they told us. We've been listening. We figured it out. We're going to form a line up front at our prayer team, and they're just going to do one swipe. Do not use foul or abusive language. Now, here's the flip side of that, isn't it? The flip side of that is... um, let everything you say be good and helpful. Yeah. Um, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Ooh. Oh, man. Think about it. People are listening to what you say. And would your words be an encouragement to everyone? Not even just the person. See, you're thinking, I'm just talking to one person, but there's other people who hear. And if you have kids, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you have kids and they're taking that in, and my kids do that, they'll take some of this stuff in because I'm not perfect sometimes, and I say things that I shouldn't say, and they're, they're little sponges, man. They just drive me nuts. And then sometimes they say things that I don't say, and I'm like, you didn't learn that from me. I know you didn't learn that from me. <laughs> But my words, our words, would be an encouragement. Our our words would build up, not tear down. That our words, one one of the translations says that our words would benefit those who hear. What a change, right? From foul and abusive language to now my words being an encouragement to those who here and now and then he's gonna now he goes into this um verse 30 and do not bring sorrow to god's holy spirit by the way you live some of you by the choices that you're making are bringing sorrow the word the word is also grieve do not bring sorrow on the holy spirit by the way that you live remember this is just a good reminder for all of us um, he has identified you as his own the spirit of god you belong to him, and um, he is guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. So basically, he's just going, listen, be- because you understand who the Spirit is in your life, because you know that, he's going, um, don't bring sorrow upon him by the way you live your life. So, so what that means is I'm going to begin to embrace and pursue the, the things that he says and teaches in the scriptures and so i'm looking at this going okay so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i'm not i'm gonna pursue truth um i'm not gonna be angry uh i'm gonna i'm gonna talk this out so that i'm not i'm gonna let go of some of that hurt i'm gonna i'm gonna deal with these things before they begin to get a foothold in my life i'm gonna watch the way that i talk to other people because my words matter 
So I'm paying attention to those things so that, so that why? So that my life doesn't bring sorrow upon the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit by making bad choices and living a life that, that is not worthy of the calling, right? Because you were called. We talked about that a little bit last week. So I'm watching the way that I'm living my life. I'm guarding that because the, the Holy Spirit, two things. He's, he's identified me as his own. Yes, I belong to him. And then the second thing, he's guaranteeing my salvation. Because I have the Holy Spirit, I'm guaranteed salvation on the day when Jesus calls me home. And so now what? What do we do? And he says this. This is how he closes out the whole thing. He says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Like all these things. Bitterness. Woo! Anybody, you got that root, that root of bitterness in your life? Rage. Yes, yeah, some of you, I've seen you on the road. I've paid attention. <laughs> Anger. Harsh words. He's, he's putting, he's like lumping all of these things together in this and slander. And because some of you are reading that and you're going, ah, I'm okay. He's going, no, 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 no. As well as all types of evil behavior. <laughs> Basically, anything that's not like worthy of Jesus in your life. Can you list a few things now? Like, yes, okay, I know. Here it is. All types of evil behavior. And then he's going to flip it now. So he's, instead, this is what he does. Put it in place of this. And this is, this is to me, man, if we can get this right. Instead, be kind to each other. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. Why? Um, because God, through Christ, has forgiven you. You're a mess. I'm a mess. And all of my sin is on Jesus and the cross. Cause, and I've been forgiven much, so I can forgive much. And, and see, when I, when I can get to that place where I can forgive, and, and by that I mean releasing other people so that they no longer owe me, that's how, that's how I, I kind of look at that forgiveness piece. Because when we walk in unforgiveness, we think someone owes us something. They owe us an apology or they need to make up for the hurt that they caused or those types of things. But, but in this, it's like, no, 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 I'm going to forgive. I'm going to, I'm setting them free. And by setting them free, here's the thing, you're setting yourself free. And so you're walking in this. So, so just think about it. Uh, some of you walked in here maybe with a struggling marriage. Guess what? Be kind to each other. This, this one thing right here can revolutionize. You know what? I mean, just be kind to each other. Be tenderhearted, compassionate towards one another. I'm, I'm compassionate towards this other person, and then I'm going to forgive. Why? Because just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So this is how, this is how I, as a follower of Jesus, I'm going to walk. Why? Because this is the me that he wants you to be. This is the me that God wants me to be. And it's true for you and myself. And we can walk in this, and it will, it will completely change and revolutionize the relationships that we walk in on a daily basis. So I want to I leave you with three thoughts as you go through this. Uh, one is this. Um, embrace the change because you're no longer the same. And I know this, this sounds kind of weird, but, but just think about it. So many of us are reluctant to change. We're resistant towards it. We don't want it, but, but he, the truth is, when you look at Scripture, he's trying to show you, he's like, here, like, it's, so, it's, so, it's just laid out, like, here, stop doing this, start doing this, replace this with this, and it's boom. Don't be angry anymore. Embrace this work that's happening in your life, because you're not, listen, you're not the same person that you used to be. Uh, you're, being, you're being created Right? This new life is being created in righteousness and holiness. So your new life in Christ is not your old life. Your new life in Christ, by the way, is an ongoing thing. It's not, it's, you didn't arrive. It's not like, okay, well, I made this profession of faith or I asked Jesus to come into my heart or whatever your particular language would be. And all of a sudden now I'm, I'm this amazing individual. No, you're not. Not yet. You're getting there. You're getting there, but you've got to embrace this this. It's called sanctification is actually the, the theological doctrine term for it. But, but you're being sanctified, this ongoing process, this new life in Christ. So embrace the change. Number two, um, be honest with yourself. 
and here's, here's what I mean by that. When you look at the scriptures and it says, you know, you who used to lie, stop telling lies. Um, don't let the sun go down for those of you who deal with anger. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't allow that to, to be what happens in your life. Um, stop talking with um, foul or abusive language. Be honest about these areas and these struggles that you have with your life because the truth of it is we all, we all have something. Because look around the room. I mean, there's not any of us as, that's perfect in here. And so, so just be honest. Start to be honest about the struggles that you have in your life. Be honest about the areas where you're going, you know what, I really struggle with that rage or um, anger or resentment or jealousy or... Um, you know, I, hey, I, I struggle with stealing things. I'm, I like to take things from other people that don't belong to me. I don't know, but just get to this place where you're honest going, I just, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to get real honest about who I am. Because it's there. That's the starting place where God begins to work and go, because you don't have to be that. You don't have to be that person anymore. The who, who you used to be. You, you are new. You are being created new in righteousness and holiness. And man, it is a beautiful masterpiece when you look at what the scripture says. And then last thing is the surrender to the spirit. Oh, this is a tough one. See, because we, I'll bet that you all are much like me. And, and I'm a control freak. I, anybody else? So I, I like to be in control. Um, the Lord's working with me, and, and right now he's working with me through um, one of my kids getting their learner's permit. <laughs> and I'm learning, too, that I'm not in control all the time. That, that fake break doesn't work. <laughs> um, but the Spirit's working in your life. And if, you, if you're here today, if you showed up, you've heard, you've heard God's word, you've heard truth. And, and I just want to tell you, like, God is working in your life. And, and when you can just surrender and yield to that, and, and that means giving up control. And the way that, the way that I look at it is, is palms up. I have a friend of mine, and he and I, when we get together, we talk, we talk about living life. Just We don't hold on to things real tightly. We just hold on to them loosely because we're surrendering and palms up to me is just surrendering like here it is God here's my life here's my whatever here's my family here's my here's my anger here's you know what here's my attitude here's my thoughts here's my my struggles that I have God I'm just going to live this way I'm going to surrender to what the spirit is doing in my life and I will see him do and accomplish way more than I ever thought possible and so I wonder if, if maybe you can join me in just choosing to surrender to what God's doing in your life. Maybe, maybe it is anger. Maybe it's lies. Maybe it's the way that you talk. Maybe it's your attitude. Maybe it's, it's just your heart. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just lust or some kind of desire, or something that you're struggling with just to go, you know what? I, I just want to release that. I want to give that. I want to in, embrace the Spirit's work, God's work in my life, and I'm going to live palms up. I'm not going to hold too tightly to those things any longer. I'm going to ask the Lord to begin to pry my grip on that stuff. So I'm going to ask you what, we're going to stand and I'm going to pray over us and Travis is just going to lead us in a song and our prayer team is going to come down front and they're here to pray with you and for you and over you and man, gosh, if you need to have your mouth washed out with soap, they may even do that for you. But palms up, surrendering to his work, yielding to what he's doing as he is creating us, molding us in righteousness and holiness. You're not the same person that you used to be, but you're not quite who you're going to be. And that's a good thing. Father, thank you for the truth of your word today. Thank you that... You continue to work in us. Wow. And I know th there's so many of us as, as we've embraced just, just this Ephesians 4, this, this, this chapter over the last couple of weeks. You're doing such a powerful work. And so help us, God, just to, just to walk in this, to walk in truth, to walk in who you've called us to be, that we would, we would just live out 
what you've said. We wouldn't, we wouldn't wrestle, we wouldn't fight, we wouldn't resist, we would just embrace you. Thank you for the work that you're doing. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.